Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff, and yes, we're starting this. It's new, it's fresh out, um, I've been looking forward to it, so uh, everyone in the First Impressions live stream said, get on with it, let's see it come together. So um, I quite fancy doing that, so that's what we're going to do. Um... We've had a look through this. Um, the live stream videos are never as quite as sharp as, as other first impressions. Um, I decided I'm not going to film it again as another first impressions. We're just going to get the instructions and start building. Let's crack on. Right then, first thing we've got to do is make a decision, and this is it. This is the version we're going to do. Um, it's all white, despite what it looks like on the instructions here. Um, it's matte upper works with gloss lower works um, and then you've got this um, camouflage on the upper surfaces and there's going to be some interesting masking we've got to do there so um, that that should be quite interesting to do but it's just so very different so I thought yeah that, that that's the one that, that tickles my fancy. The other one that I was considering, I've got to be honest, I, I was never considering the version that's that's all yellow underneath um but this one my grandfather may well have seen this aircraft because he this is the one that was flying above dunkirk and he he made seven trips um to dunkirk uh, and he was certainly um out there on that date so um this is an aircraft that my grandfather would have seen so um, i was very very close to building this but it's so much like so many others that I thought we'd do something a bit different. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do Penske B. Now, Avro Anson, let's quickly talk about I grew that. up in a little village. Well, not actually a small village, quite a big village called Poynton. And Poynton um, is the village neighbouring Woodford. And uh, Woodford is the area where A.V. Rowe... Um, started his um, aircraft business and the uh, aerodrome at Woodford um, came out of that and that's ultimately um, where um, Avro built their Lancasters and Vulcans and then later became BAE Systems and was involved with Nimrods uh, and also the ATP um, and uh, the last aircraft uh, really developed there was the RJX, which they cancelled uh, with 9-11. And I worked there at, at, at that time. Um, and uh, the, the, the point that I'm about to make is that uh, Poynton was um, a coal mining village. So it had a number of collieries. Um, they'd been developed by the, the Warren fam family, who were the landowners there. Uh, uh, and... Um, one of the pits was called the Anson Pit, and there is an Anson Road. And today uh, in uh, Poynton, there is an Anson Steam Engine Museum. So Anson is a word you come across a lot in that local area. And so I often wonder whether the Avro Anson got its name um, from the, the Anson um, Pit. Although it could be, and this is just my theory, um, it could be that Anson relates to George Anson or Lord Anson, who was uh, Admiral of the Fleet. I think he got sacked by uh, Pitt and then uh, and then came back. Now I know that he had some relation um, to um, the the Earl of Macclesfield. Macclesfield is neighbouring of Poynton, so I'm guessing that Anson comes from. Um, Lord Anson of 1697 to 1762 or 1763, something like that. Um, so um, landowners nearby, yeah. So probably Anson comes from um, Lord Anson, I would imagine, and, and that's where the name comes from. But I don't know that for sure. Just a theory. I don't really know. If you know then I'd love to hear that in the comments. But 
Um, I've grown up with the name Anson, so when the when Airfix said, right, Avro Anson's coming out, uh, uh, that pricked my ears up. I was interested. Um, and as it happens, it's a lovely, lovely, in fact, stunning kit. So we're going to do this version, the Australian version, and um, we are going to have a lot of fun with this. I've just washed the parts. Um, I just need to check what I've got in the way of the paint. I know we've got silver. I know we've got white. I'm not going to do it two different whites. I'll do it all one white and then use different glosses. Uh, and definitely got gunmetal and yellow. Definitely got black. Um, so it's just checking whether I've got the brown and the green. Right then. I've taken the parts out for the first few steps. So let's, uh, let's see how this comes together so um, first part is this quite tiny little whatever it is I have no idea I've said it before and I'm going to say it again I do like Airfix's new hard plastic it is really nice to work with. Right. Okay, and then the level of detail on this is lovely. Some really nice detail in there. There's quite a heavy, well, not a heavy seam, but there is a, uh, a prominent seam shall we call it, um, on the underside there. So I'm just going to remove that because that's going to interfere with it sitting flush on the uh, floor panel when we fit it. Okay, that is our step one done. Step two has us put in uh, the part that we made up in the first step into the floor pan for the cockpit here. And uh, I've just put that in and it's such a tight fit. Um, it's really nice. Um, so we might as well glue that in as it's uh, in place now this is all so far this is all cockpit green 78 um, so no issue with that and then the other part of um, in terms of you don't have to worry about different colors at this stage now I'm just going to clean up this part we've got a couple of ejector uh, pins to remove there and uh, connection nubs. Being careful not to remove the little detail at the bottom of the uh, strap there. That's a nub too. Okay, now that part's cleaned up, this big recess goes into the back here and it does leave a little, there's a little bit of wiggle in it and it does leave a little bit of a gap um, and now we've glued that in, that actually gets in the way of filling that gap so we'll have a look at that later. Let's, um, let's put some glue in and see how we get on. Should be able to put some Vallejo putty in there. Should uh, do the trick quite quickly, I would think. So that is in. 
Uh, that little bit that looks like a flag sticking out um, has um, a decal to go on there of some dials um, and is painted black. So uh, I'm not putting anything on. I'm going to build it up as far as I can and then uh, we'll, we'll paint it all green and then pick out the black bits afterwards. I have just realised I'm not... I've not cut the nubs off this, so I just need to sort that out before I go any further. I'm getting carried away here, aren't I? So I'll just clean them up. Okay, right, we've done that properly now. So that is step two done the uh, little footprints here apparently get painted silver um, okay right so let's put that to one side step three is building up this chair so let's crack on with that there's a little bit of sink uh, noticeable in the front of this part Now they put the nubs on the edge there, which was a good idea, but they didn't do that where they needed to earlier on. Uh, with the When we were looking at the parts in the first impressions, all those engine cowl blisters, they could have done it on there, it would have made life a lot easier. Uh, put that off some nice detail in terms of the seat fittings though I have to say okay let's test fit that lot see how it goes together okay that looks okay so uh, let's glue that together um, we're going to have to do some filling work on here though I think so we've got a little bit of sink at the front here um, and then we're going to have a seam up the middle of the, the seat there which is going to have to be uh, worked to make right and that will have to be done before we put the cushion in I think but we'll clean up the cushion anyway just have a look at how good the fit is with the seat cushion Okay, the cushion overhangs, uh, which I guess it's supposed to do. Yes, it is when looking at the image. Yeah, so we need to clean that up before we put the cushion in. But now I know the cushion overhangs. I just want to soften that lip on the bottom so it's a bit more rounded. It's quite sh um, sharp. And I'll just soften it up a little bit, make it look like a cushion. Okay, so that's those parts done. Um, then step four would be fitting that. So that goes here. I'm not going to fit it, obviously, because we need to clean it up. But that's where it goes. So that is fitting okay. Um, going to be difficult to paint that with that fitted so all this test fitting is good for helping us work out what we need to do I'm, I'm actually thinking I might want to take that off so we can get in and fill there so let's do that I'm going to put some glue under it and 
going to give it a wiggle with some tweezers and see if we can get that out. There we go. That's going to allow us to get in and fill that. So there we go. That's the first learning. We'll let all that dry up. Okay, next step then is step five which is this seat here um, which has a more complex frame and we've got an ejector pin that needs to be sorted out because it's quite proud quite visible right i've built this up as far as i can for now uh, my suggestion is if you're building this kit is you start with step two and put this in then you can fill that area there before you do step one and then fit it which you can do prior to painting so we're going to do that filling um, no issues with adding these two seats um, because they're easy to get to um, you can paint them and then go in and do the black bits afterwards um, this seat needs quite a bit of filling uh, to sort out that join seam there and a little bit of sink on the front. Um, so we've got a little bit of work to do. The rest of it's okay though. Um, this seat has gone together really well, but um, it's going to be easier to paint the black areas um, separately um, before we fit this in. So we'll paint it at the same time as we paint that. Paint it in the green, then we'll paint the black in and then we'll fit it. So that completes me up to step eight. So I'm going to go and do some filling and then we'll have a look at some more steps before we do any painting. Basically, I want to build this up into its sub-assemblies as, as much as possible.
little shelving rack full of radio equipment, which you can see the detail of is really quite nice. Um, it is made up of four parts. So I'm just going to clean those up and, and slam them together, ready for painting. And look at the detail, it's really nice. It, it really does remind me of their Walrus, which is an outstanding model. If you've not um, looked at their um, Walrus, I built the Silver Wings version when they released it, and it's truly nice. There's a couple of um, eject pin marks here. Uh, I just need to work out whether they're seen or not. And we've got um, what looks like some form of soft pad so let's have a look at the instructions and understand that before we build things when up. this goes in that little pad which is this part here forms the backrest for for that stool um, so it'll be in that orientation so yeah that needs to be painted as well but there's no reason why that can't be painted after assembly um, there is as we look at the colours, the, the, the frame is the cockpit green and all the equipment is black boxes with some decals on. So again, um, I think there should be no reason why we can't assemble it before we paint it, so that's what we'll do. So there's been a lot of talk about the fact that this is in a, a new hard plastic, and it's not really. Um, it, <laughs> um, it is a hard plastic, um, and it's definitely changed from there. Um, softer plastic that many modelers might be familiar with um, but the harder plastic's been out now for a little while um, they've clearly been messing around with it and settled on this color for some reason but I have had a number of kits this year so um, the um, some of which are reissues of original toolings um, and they've been in harder plastic too so um, there's been several um, issues of kits this year in harder plastic so the harder plastic for me has been out more than six months um, but it was only with the Buccaneer the 148 Buccaneer that we saw this um, colour change so for those of you that have not come acro across um, the uh, so-called hard plastic what does hard plastic mean well Think Hasegawa, think Tamiya, um, and that's where you'll be because this plastic is, is the same level of hardness as those. Um, I did a little scratch test and um, yeah, it's in the same ballpark. So it's lovely plastic to work with, uh, to be honest. And um, like everything, um, harder plastics have some advantages and some disadvantages and so do softer plastics so um, uh, what it does do is it's um, a lot less forgiving when it comes to um, sanding you need more sanding to get you where you need to be and you've got to be more conscious of the grit you're using and taking out those scratches because um, the softer plastic cleaned up a bit easier in, in, in all honesty um, but that's the same that's true with you know other softer plastic kits like mini art and uh, what have you so I, I I like it I've got to say I like working with it Um, okay, so that's our radio set cleaned up in there like so. And the fit of that is nice. No issues with the fit there. So let's clean that up and then we can glue that together while we're cleaning up the next one detail on that is lovely we've got some little electrical points along the end there so I'm guessing if you did some research there's some cabling we could put in at this point right so that goes in there like that that is not totally flat so I just want to make that totally flat make sure that the fit is as it should be the fit is positive but you have to be careful 
um, because you could not quite align it up properly um, if you were being a bit slap handy. Screwing the top. And some glue in the bottom. So that is going together. I was asked the question about how this um, harder plastic glues, and the answer is really nicely, really nicely. So there you go. I mean, that looks wonderful, doesn't it? So let's clean up this next bit while that's drying for a sec. Um, we do have a little bit of seam. This goes in there like that. So you may, if you wish, some people may want to just um, fill, let me get my tweezers so you know what I'm talking about. Some people may want to fill and sound these little joins here. Um, the danger you've got, particularly with this one, is taking material away from um, this upright here. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is, because it can certainly do with a bit of squaring off, let's just see, I'm getting with a thinny stick okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of Vallejo putty in there and see if we can just skim it smooth a little bit because if we've got the cushion there, that those two bits are going to be uh, quite visible. Um, so, and those gaps will become quite visible under paint. Uh, we don't need to worry about that because the uh, plate that goes in the bottom here is gonna sort that. Um, and it seems to be a table at the front and the, the cushion at the back. Okay, let's clean that up and then we can test fit that. Don't be removing that thinking it's a nub because it's not. We're going to just take that little bit. There's a tiny bit of seam. You can you can only see it with your magnifying glasses on, but it is there. And you never know what this is going to do when you do a wash. It might just highlight itself. So okay. So what we can do now? Just do another test fit. So there's a little tab underneath here, which sits in there. And that gives you the correct spacing on one side and then the feet of the um, frame sit on the other side. And that gives you a little table at the front and a cushion at the back. That's lovely. Right, let's get that glued in then. Okay, that looks rather nice, I think. There we go. Really happy with that. I've just done a test fit and I thought it was probably worth us going through the um, handful of ejector pins that are visible in here. Um, so there is a, a plate that goes on this section here which covers those three. So we're not going to see any of those. Um, this one is underneath the floor level. Now there is a bulkhead that is going to go up there. So in the actual cockpit area, you're from where my fingers are forward. So you won't actually see any of those. You can see that one. Um, and that one 
is under the floor, so you can't see that one. Now you've got a glass nose going on the front of that, so I'd recommend removing that one, and I'd recommend removing that one. Now there's um, a gun turret that goes in there, so you may see those, and it'll be too late to sort them out when we get to test fit the gun turret, so I recommend that we sort those two out now. That one we can leave, and probably that one we need to sort as well. So those three, and that one, and those two. Um, most of them are fairly proud. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a sand and see if I can sand them out, and then resort to Mr. Surfacer as a plan B. People have lots of different approaches to uh, removing eject pin marks. Um, I personally like to use uh, a little bit of um, uh, abrasive paper um, because I can get it nice and small and uh, the size of my finger and it's easy to get into those awkward small places. So I'll go in with um, a more abrasive one first, sort of a, 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 a low medium grit and then use um, a low grit one afterwards just to take out any uh, scuff marks that was left in. I think we'll need a little bit of Mr. Surfacer on that one at least. May not be visible, but, but I'm not 100% sure. When you use a bit of wet and dry and dampen it, you end up creating a cutting paste and that, uh, that allows you to uh, increase the amount of abrasiveness you're putting on and it also smooths what you're doing so I find that really helps okay there we go we'll have to see what that looks like when we uh, come to paint it well there's no way around it on the other fuselage half we definitely have to go in with the Mr. Surfacer. Uh, we have more ejector pins and we have uh, quite deeply countersunk ones, whereas they were fairly shallow and we could send them out on the other fuselage half. There we go, we'll let that shrink back and see what more needs to be done. I did have, I have managed to sand one out and you can see I had a go at sanding this one out, but uh, it's not for going, so uh, I'll just build that up a little bit more, give it a fighting chance. Okay, now I'm not sure whether this one is going to be visible or not, but uh, we're going to fill it anyway. Okay, there we go. So I've pretty much got all my parts cleaned up to step 39, which is building up the main fuselage and the interior. And the reason why I wanted to do that is so that we can get it to a point where we can paint all the cockpit green which means painting the inside of the fuselage. It also means painting things like the roof. Now, I don't think that's going to be seen. So I'm sort of oohing and ahhing whether I'm filling it or not. I'll probably make a decision in a minute after I've said I'm going to leave it and then fill it all. But I don't know. For, for now, I'm not doing anything with it. But we do have to drill a little hole in it. It's asking for a 1.3 millimetre hole. Um, but I can't find the location point for it. 
So when you look at the uh, instructions, oh yeah, there's a very tiny indent. You can just about see it there. So we just need to drill through that. 1.3 they're calling for. I always do it under size and then ream it out if I need to. So that's the next thing to do. Okay, happy with that. So that's that done. The other thing we can do is um, glue this on. So it has a couple of uh, location points and it's basically the housing for lowering the um, gun turrets gun into the into position. So the inside of that will be the same color as the aircraft so we can we can paint that at the same time. So I'm just going to bob that on and then the idea about gluing it on now is that when we paint all of this um, cockpit green we'll do the interior anything visible on the interior at the same time. Make sure that's nice and square. Okay, so that gets me to step 39, which includes the underside plate. We don't have to do anything with that, um, but as we're putting the uh, two fuse large halves together, I want to make sure that everything's um, in its place correctly. Um, we've got the roof, and we've got um, a bulkhead, and we've got uh, the other side plate that fits in here like so so we're pretty much ready to go so my next step is some painting so before we start laying down lots of um, interior uh, green everywhere uh, we need to consider what else needs to be um, in that color and the obvious area is the uh, landing gear bays um, I'm likely to have the landing gear um, down. I still think um, the view in there will be quite restricted but these are the parts that make up the um, in interior section of the, the landing gear so there's quite a bit of framework then. I, I imagine that these would have been um, perforated but they're so thick that they won't quite look right perforated so it's better to give them a wash and make them stand out that way I think. Um, but there's lots of nice detail on here. Um, I'm sure it's um, a fraction of what's actually there, but it looks good enough to me. Um, nice to see some cabling and stuff. Um, so uh, I'm going to clean these parts up. We've got two sets of those to do, one for each wing, um, and they can be built up um, ready for painting um, uh, ahead of um, doing anything else. So we'll just treat these as sub-assemblies. Uh, and then I'll carry on looking through what else might need to be done. So it may be that we can do part of the gun turret as well. Um, and then we're ready for um, getting some paint down. Right then, we are ready to rumble on getting paint on this. Going to start with a grey primer. Um, I've got everything uh, ready for painting. 
using different methods for different size pieces that's that's not untypical um, and we're going to be using my paint booth for the first time in three years right let's crack on with this gray primer down and then i'm going to use um pale green now Right, we have our cockpit green down, and um, that's gone down um, <laughs> not trouble free, but my trouble was I opened my first pot of paint and that's no longer usable. Then I went to my second pot of paint and that's no longer usable. So I've ended up using um, Tamiya paint, but um, as we're spray painting it, it's not too much of a problem, just a little bit more uh, faffy than some maybe. Um, but it's gone down okay and it looks all right. Um, it's not perfectly the correct green, um, but by the time we've put some washes on and, and messed around with it, who's going to know? So um, that's where we're up to. Um, the next step was um, matte black. Um, so we've been putting that down wherever we need some matte black. Um, and then we're just carrying on. So what I'm doing is I'm going back to step one and two, what's the next paint colour I need to paint, and then follow that through all the way through all my sub-assembled parts, wherever that colour's needed. Uh, and then eventually we'll get to a point where we can start uh, assembling all of this. So my next colour is actually aluminium, which goes on these two little foot pads here. So I'm going to... I assume the foot pads are sort of that sort of shape, aren't they? So they need to be aluminium. They call for um, silver in the um, instructions, but right then, let's have a go at this. I'm using um, MIG's uh, metal colour. It's it's one of my favourite. Um, well, in fact, I think it is my favourite um, range of paints for metal colours. Um, they ju they just work really well, both both brush and airbrush. So. We're just going to put this down. This is unthinned straight from the bottle, um, and I find that it works really well. Um, so you do have to thin it a little bit for the airbrush, I think. Okay, there you go. That's the first one. So there's another one next to it. Now, obviously, this is one of the colours we'll eventually use for a little bit of chipping. So don't mind if I go over it a little bit, plus we're going to do a wash um, on here which will sharpen things up. But that's a, essentially what the instructions are calling for. Now, I've not been able to find any evidence for this one way or another, but I'm fairly sure that that is a light. So I'm also going to paint this aluminium. 
and then we'll put a little dab of gloss varnish on it and hopefully that'll look okay. Okay, so that's the base colour down for that. Um, okay, let's see what else. Okay, so there's also a bit of um, detailing to go on here. And there are um, on the internet some pictures of um, Avro Anson insides. Um, and there are some variations, and you do have to be careful with restored museum pieces, but they all have um, this little panel here on the top where the uh, controls are in aluminium and indeed the instructions do call for it to be painted silver so that's what we're going to do now interestingly the instructions ethics have you paint the ends of the control sticks with um, black but when you look at the cockpits this upper one here perhaps should be red so I think I'm going to do that just for a little bit of variation So I think we have some other bits and pieces on here that are also picked out in 11. So I'm going to do this handle in 11. Um, as well seems to be the same color as the others when you look at the photos of the actual thing although um, Humbrol call out 56 for this particular one okay and then further on down as you go through the instructions it's asking you to paint this silver as well so i'm going to paint that in steel just for a bit of variation i'm not even sure how visible that's going to be you can just about see it from one angle but yeah um the bottom of that should be 56 as well so again a little bit of variation will be nice what we can also do at this stage is the pedals so um in the um instructions you're being asked to paint them 78 which is um, semi-gloss black but all the ones I've seen have been in the green so I'm going to leave them in the cockpit green now I don't again don't know whether that's just restoration or, or what have you but we can just dry brush some wear onto there now so I've just wiped all the paint off my brush as best I can and we'll just give that a little bit of wear. There we go. Right. Okay, so we need another colour. 
we've got our aluminium paint out we can paint these so basically the frames are green but everything else on there should be aluminium I'm guessing that the cables aren't, so I'm going to leave those and we'll perhaps pick them out in black. After. Right, this part um, is like um, a bulkhead that goes in um, at step 32 with the um, with the roof section for um, the gun turret. Um, and the inside part of this um, is the paint that's called up is Humbrol 100, which is red-brown. Uh, which I don't have in stock, so I'm going to use um, this um, 175 from Hataka Red Primer Base. Now I used this on the inside of my Wellington and it looked phenomenal, um, so I really like the paint. Um, so we're going to brush paint that in. Um, I can't remember whether it was one or two coats, but this is pre-thinned for airbrush. So um, that means it's also pre-thinned for paintbrush in my world. So uh, we're gonna put that down very carefully. It goes inside of the outside raised frame. So shouldn't be too difficult to paint up to really. Definitely a two coat job. Maybe, maybe three. I could say it's pre thinned for airbrush. Um, so, although we can use it with a paintbrush, it really wants to be. Just a tad thicker, really, for the paintbrush. Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and give it another coat.
That'll look alright with a wash. Bottle here. Um, the top is brass and the content of the bottle is copper. So I'm guessing it's a fire extinguisher. Um, so I'm going to use some true metal for this job, which is a tube waxy like oil paint um, from AK. And I quite like them actually. Um, and when dry, you can buff them up and stuff. Just don't buff too much because it does actually rub off. Um, we're going to start with the copper. Um, and I just use it neat from the tube. Um, you could probably thin it with linseed oil or turps or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've used it straight from the bottle so far with no problems whatsoever. Now then, let's see. See that looks all right, doesn't it? I think you can probably see it better on camera than I can see it. Now, while we've got the brass out, we can also do the little trigger on the steering column, which is this item here, which in all the photographs I've seen, it's a sort of a, a worn brass looking colour. So if we do that in brass now when we come to do a wash um, that will darken that out for us nicely. <laughs> 